The venom of the funnel web spider is insane. It turns your body off like a light switch. But here's the crazy thing. It only works on humans. I've been investigating venomous spiders for years now, trying to answer one question. What is the world's most dangerous spider? And all roads point to one terrifying arachnid. Reported to be the most aggressive spider on Earth, capable of killing you in just minutes, the funnel web has become something of a legend. Lurking in dark burrows in southeastern Australia, there is something about these spiders that has gripped an entire nation with fear, even when they're living alongside much more dangerous snakes. The funnel web is without question one of the worst spider bites you could ever take. But I have a sneaking suspicion we're not getting the full story. What is their venom doing that makes it so dangerous to people? Why does it seem that compared to all other spiders, funnel webs are so much more likely to bite? And what is the true nature of the world's deadliest spider? My name is Spencer Hoffman. I'm a biologist and filmmaker from North Carolina, and I've traveled all the way to Australia to answer these questions once and for all. What I found surprised me more than any spider I've seen in years of traveling the world, and might change your perspective on these eight-legged arachnids forever. The land down under is known for famous landscapes and even more iconic wildlife. You can't go far without seeing creatures straight out of the frames of classic nature documentaries. But I'm not here for emus or koalas. I'm on the hunt for one of the world's most dangerous spiders, and it's shocking how close they live to people. Look at that spider right there. This is only a juvenile. That's a Sydney funnel web. Look at the fangs on this thing. Ooh. They're surprisingly quick when they want to be. I gotta keep an eye on this spider. Even though it's a small individual, those fangs could go straight through a fingernail and deliver a potent neurotoxic bite. Look at that thing right there. That is one scary freaking spider. What it's doing out here, it's building burrows, building nests, and it creates those iconic wispy funnel webs That's where it gets its name. That's what we're basically out here looking for today, but we need one considerably bigger than this little guy right here. You're probably already thinking I'm crazy. I'm searching for a super venomous spider and trying to find a big one. But what makes a spider dangerous in the first place? We throw around the word venomous for spiders, but out of over 50,000 species of spider in the world, nearly all of them use venom to kill their food. So to describe spiders that are venomous enough to be dangerous to people, we actually use the term medically significant. The most common ones you've probably heard of are the brown recluse and the black widow spiders, as far as spiders that people think are super, super deadly. But the truth is, Serious spider bites are actually quite rare. Take a minute and guess how many people have died in modern history to spider bites. No, no cheating, no using Google. If tens of thousands of people are bitten by spiders every year, how many would you guess have probably died? A thousand? 10,000? More? The truth is, in our medical data, fewer than 50 people have been confirmed to be killed by spiders in modern history. And most of them come from three spiders. The Chilean recluse spider, with a total of nine confirmed kills. The Brazilian wandering spiders, with a total of 10 confirmed kills. And the Sydney funnel web, with a total of 13 confirmed kills. 13. The world's deadliest spider has killed a whopping 13 people ever and actually hasn't killed anybody since we developed antivenom in the 80s. The fact that these spiders have killed people is still impressive. They're not big animals, so they've got to have a pretty potent venom. And it's actually the venom of the funnel web that makes it so unique. The funnel web has a neurotoxin, which is a venom that attacks the central nervous system. Your nervous system is this network of almost like electrical wiring that sends signals through your body. It's made up of these specialized cells, nerves, which are capable of using charged particles to produce actual electrical signals. You use nerves to move, you use nerves to feel, see, hear, all those kinds of things. Your body is almost like an electrical circuit and the nerves are the wiring. Without your nervous system, your body couldn't function. 
The main ingredient in the venom of the funnel web is called a trachotoxin, and the way that this interacts with your nerves is why their bite is so dangerous. It's what we call an inhibitory neurotoxin. What it basically does is it prevents your nerves from sending signals at all, stopping that electrical current in its tracks. What the funnel web is doing is shutting your nervous system down, and in the case of its prey, it turns them off like a light switch. But what's really strange about their venom is the fact that it's really only designed for insects. Funnel webs live 90% of their lives underground in these burrows. Their web isn't super sticky, it's not super strong. It's literally only for catching small ground dwelling insects. But it just so happens that the exact receptor that their venom is shutting down in insects also exists in the nerves of primates where basically every other mammal would be totally fine, maybe just in a little bit of pain if a funnel web bit them, primates like you and me are in big trouble if the funnel web actually gets that venom into our system. So our best guess is that this is just a weird evolutionary accident, which makes it even crazier that this accident made the funnel webs one of the most venomous spiders on the planet. If one of these spiders bites you, you'll know. With the size of their fangs, the funnel web's bite is excruciating and the venom acts quickly. As the venom causes your nerves to misfire, your muscles will twitch uncontrollably, you'll struggle to breathe, and you can lose consciousness in minutes. It's a bad, bad bite. But what I want to know is, how likely are you to actually get bitten by this spider? The answer is hidden in their biology. Believe it or not, I used to be really afraid of spiders. Now, I know that arachnophobia is different for different people, but for me, the thing that I feared the most was the spider's bite. I thought that spiders just had it out for me and wanted to bite me if they were anywhere near me. And that creeped me out so bad. The thing that's so weird about that is, while I was afraid of spiders, I always loved insects and crustaceans and other creepy crawlies, so spiders were just this weird mental block for me. And what helped me beat that was actually taking time to study spiders more closely. The closer I looked at them, the more I realized that they weren't that different from any other little animals that are living in our backyards. Like most insects, they prefer to just flee. That thing that I'm afraid of, the bite, is the last thing that spiders actually want to use when they're confronted by people. Even the most dangerous spiders in the world are a lot less dangerous to us than we are to them. And I've seen this time and time again with even some of the most venomous species on the planet. Even spiders that I thought would not be possible to handle proved to be no different than their less dangerous counterparts. And this is what isn't adding up about the funnel web. I see it in the comments, I see it in stories, people make the funnel web out to be some sort of bloodthirsty killer. It's like it wants to bite people or something. I knew I couldn't come down to Australia without finding out the truth for myself, but in order to do that without getting myself killed, I need to look for clues elsewhere first. A lot of people have been asking me, would I ever hold a purse web spider? And I think the answer to that is yes. Let's see how she cooperates. I'm in Florida, working with the American equivalent of the funnel web. It's smaller, distant cousin known as the purse web spider. Like the funnel webs, these spiders are megalomorphs, part of a primitive suborder of spiders that primarily live deep underground in silk-lined burrows. And like their Australian cousins, they can sometimes be very temperamental. She's flaring at the container. Too. It's night and day. If I antagonize the spider, it gets defensive and tries to bite anything that comes near it. These aren't dangerously venomous, so I can risk a bite here and there as I learn the spider's boundaries. But what's shocking is how calm they are when they're simply allowed to just walk around on my hand. They can be a little bit cantankerous, but usually their instinct is not to bite. I think it goes without saying that by the end of this video, I hope to freehandle a Sydney funnel web spider to find out their true nature. But when attempting something as incredibly dangerous as this, I need to be sure that I know how to read the spider and what to expect from its behavior. So I'm studying their close relatives that lack the extremely potent venom. This is what's known as using behavioral analogs. Studying how their close evolutionary relatives experience the world helps me to know what behavioral cues to look for when I attempt the real thing. For a burrow-dwelling megalomorph spider, life is very different than it is for a wolf spider or wandering spider. They basically never leave their burrow unless disturbed by a predator or flooded out by rain. 
Many of these spiders can live for decades, just existing underground, letting insects occasionally announce themselves by walking over their webs. They have eyes, but they're not for seeing images the way that we do. They're mostly for seeing light and dark, and just tell the spider whether or not it's been exposed. The biggest difference between these megalomorphs and the wandering spiders is they're very grumpy when exposed to the light. But that's the really interesting part. You can actually see when one of these spiders is upset. They wear their mood, very visibly on their chelicerae, the anatomy at the front of their face that house their fangs. If a megalomorph is unhappy with you, you will see it long before you feel the bite. We're just one step away from clearing the name of the funnel web once and for all. What I really need to be sure of this is a male. The male funnel webs are the ones who actually leave their burrows to search for mates, and they have the most potent venom of their kind. No funnel web bite is a good time, but all of the life-threatening bites have come from male Sydney funnel webs, and they're also reported to be even more aggressive. We put out a call to all of our contacts in Australia, looking for any recent sightings of roaming males. And finally, one of our friends found exactly the spider we were looking for. We rushed out to meet him. He captured the funnel web, and we brought it to a natural area to release it into the wild and test its temperament. When we transferred it from his jar into a better vial for filming, it didn't show us a single thing. Is it possible that even the infamous male funnel web, the most terrifying spider in all of Australia, is actually just like any other spider? It was time to put my money where my mouth is. What I'm about to attempt is something you should never, under any circumstances, ever replicate at home. My name is Spencer Hoffman, and I'm about to freehandle a male Sydney funnel web. That is a spider that I've wanted to see for basically the entirety of this channel. Ever since I filmed that wandering spider in Ecuador, I wanted to know what, what, the, what the real personality of the funnel webs are, and I think we're gonna get hands on with a male Sydney funnel web to see exactly how they behave. <laughs> you can already see I'm like nervous because that is one very impressive spider. It goes without saying, don't try this at home. Holy crap. That is about as terrifying as it gets. This is a spider that has actually killed many people in human history. Might not look like much, just a shiny black tarantula, but don't underestimate it. The venom of this spider is unlike any other arachnid on the planet. In fact, it's so unique that if this thing bit your dog or your cat, it'd be completely fine. Its venom is actually particularly toxic to primate physiology. And of course, as a human, I'm a primate. So if I'm bitten, I'm in big, big trouble. You can see right <laughs> here, all I'm doing is being a surface for the spider to walk on. These have a reputation as being one of the most aggressive arachnids in the entire world. That iconic threat pose, flaring those fangs. But as you can see right here, just like any other animal, if you stay calm, so too will the spider. All that shaking is my nerves, but I'm still trying to keep my voice low keep my movements as slow and predictable as possible to keep this interaction calm and safe. Look at the spinnerets on the back of that spider. It's one of the best ways to identify them. They use that to build those curtainy, like furrowed funnel webs where they get their name. And these males, the reason he's out right now, he's probably looking for females. I can see right in the front there, he has those clubbed pedipalps and those spurs on the front legs. There is no mistaking this. That is Atrax robustus. And the males, funny enough, unlike the black widows, the males are actually the ones you really gotta watch out for. Because they're actually getting out and they're crawling around searching for mates, these guys need to have a really insane venom. That kind of venom is probably for defense. You might be wondering, okay, if it's so dangerous, why are you handling it? That sounds like a really bad idea. And that is very true. In fact, this might even be a bad idea for me. But as I'm watching this behavior, even right now, he's just sitting there. He's just hanging out. Because again, venom is still precious. As toxic, as defensive as these spiders might be, I don't give him a reason to defend himself. And he'll be just like this, kind of just waiting to see what I do next. 
The funnel webs are megalomorphs. They live deep in burrows. They're not like your wolf spiders and wandering spiders, which are hunting actively over rough terrain. These guys aren't as intelligent and as inquisitive as the wandering spiders. So like, naturally, I'm a lot more nervous. It's a lot harder for me to basically communicate that I'm not a threat to this spider. So my best bet is just to be a surface for him to walk on. Because if I'm bitten, that nasty venom gets to work. Now, there's lots of different types of spiders that have different types of venoms. Typically, they're neurotoxic. They're gonna be attacking your central nervous system. The way this guy does is actually really interesting. Your widows, they have a, they have a venom that overexcites your nerves, puts you in a world of pain, and usually just makes you wish you were dead. It's very unlikely that a widow, even a redback here in Australia, would kill you. This guy does the exact opposite. He shuts down your central nervous system. You'll feel your face going numb. Your extremities going numb. You might have uncontrollable shakes, similar to what I'm having right now, but instead of it being from the anxiety of holding a deadly spider, it's from your nerves just not being able to fire the way they're meant to. And what ends up happening, if you get a really serious envenomation from the spider, is it will eventually cause you to lose your ability to contract your diaphragm and breathe. And uh, I don't know about you, but I can't survive very long without oxygen. So that's that's actually what, what does you in with the funnel web. These guys are insane, a true force of nature. But as you can see right there, they're still beautiful. They're still amazing animals and they're part of our world. They were here long before we were. And with anti-venom initiatives and stuff, we're learning every single day how to coexist with these incredible spiders. You know, their venom doesn't have to be scary. It's actually, in my opinion, it's actually kind of cool. It's really impressive that a little spider just like this has such a powerful chemical pack within it that it can kill you in just minutes. But if you're respectful to them, as you can see right here, they'll be respectful to you. And man, I can't believe we got to be down here in Australia, hands-on with one of the most infamous spiders in the entire world, the Sydney funnel web. That doesn't get better than that. And honestly, this is something that I'm probably never gonna forget for the rest of my life. Look at that thing right there. That is just incredible. And there it is. I am one of the very few people to ever free handle a male funnel web in the wild. And I walked away unscathed. While this was one individual, and I don't doubt there are cantankerous funnel webs out there, it is pretty telling after all the stories I've heard that not a single funnel web I saw showed even the slightest hint of aggression. These spiders are dangerously venomous. Life-threatening bites do happen. But the truth, the shocking truth about the spider I'd heard so much about, is that like any other spider, they are nothing more than simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. When they do their iconic threat pose, bearing those fangs like some sort of rabid beast, they're scared. They're hoping that by looking bigger and by showing off their scariest weapons, that you'll leave them alone so they can go back to their business. In most cases, even the males aren't usually injecting a lethal dose of venom, even when bites do happen. And since antivenom was developed, these spiders have yet to claim the life of another human. The lesson here, and the reason I attempted as dangerous an experiment as handling one of these spiders is that if the world's deadliest spider isn't actually a bloodthirsty killer, maybe the spiders in your backyard aren't so bad either. And if spiders aren't so bad, maybe we can start looking at them with curiosity and start to ask questions about their true nature too, rather than simply running in fear. As a former arachnophobe myself, I'll be the first to tell you that on the other side of fear, the world becomes a much more rich and fascinating place to live. Which begs the question, if the funnel web doesn't chill me to the bone, is there any spider that does? The funnel web might be the world's deadliest spider by human kills, but there is another spider, one that lurks in some of the driest landscapes in the world, and one that might have the most frightening bite of them all. But that's a story for another time. If you enjoyed learning about the true nature of Australia's most venomous spider, you might be curious about their most venomous snake. The Inland Taipan isn't just the most venomous snake in Australia, but possesses the most potent venom of any reptile on Earth. If you want to learn more about that incredible creature, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.